AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Aldus Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Sparks, and today we are continuing with our ServiceNow series, interviewing some of the best and brightest leaders and technical talent from across the ecosystem. Today, we are very excited to showcase uh, Philippe Mora. Uh, Philippe currently holds the position of Senior Director of Customer Success at a company called Nuvolo, uh, a very exciting company who promise a fully connected workplace. Felipe is a customer focused executive. Uh, he has over 20 years experience in the art of delivering value and ensuring long term relationships that drive retention and expansion and recurring revenue. In today's conversation, Felipe will walk us through uh, the customer, what the definition of customer success and the, the value him and his team bring. Um, his view on building high performing customer success teams, as he's done multiple times in the past. Uh, a customer success roadmap and what that looks like and something that is uh, top of the list for most of the people we've had on our podcast so far which is stakeholder engagement uh, as someone like myself who is customer facing i can honestly say this conversation will add value whether you're in a technical or non-technical role um, so i hope you enjoy it so philip welcome to the show thank you ben uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, thank you for inviting me no worries, no worries. So um, let, let's start with the, the organization you work for. Can you give us a real kind of brief high level overview of Novolo and, and, and what they do? Sure, most definitely. So uh, Novolo has a scoped application that sits on top of the uh, ServiceNow platform. Uh, this application empowers companies to easily and efficiently manage uh, employees, uh, physical locations, assets, and uh, business services. I was hired at Novolo to, to come in and build the success and support team at a global scale. Um, Novolo uh, was and still today grown uh, very rapidly, but at the time, about you know about three years ago or so, um, there was an urgent need to build in a strategic way both teams, the success and support team at a global scale. And that, that is my forte, putting success at the heart of how we do business, driving success culture into the company. You know, we all take part in making sure our customers are having an excellent customer experience. But more importantly, we need to bring that true business value to our customers. That is the main reason for success teams in a company. If you are able to provide that value uh, to your customers, everything else falls in line perfectly, such as, you know, referenceability, renewals, great CSS and NPS scores. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. So, uh, as we mentioned before, you know, 20 plus years experience. Um, obviously, I think you're the first person on the show that's had a, a customer success background. So I'm sure our listeners are really keen to know a bit more about, you know, your career overview, if you wouldn't mind giving us some highlights to date. I definitely, I come from a software engineer background and, and yes, I'll be the first one to admit that to this day, I'm still a geek at heart. I love technology, uh, but my passion ended up being, you know, interacting with customers understand how they use the product and how I can actually bring more value to them. But uh, that transition happened about 12 years ago uh, when I was leading a, a team of engineers building a, an application. Uh, one day I was walking around in New York City and I ran into a customer and uh, we started to talk and um, we got into a business conversation and he said, Felipe, um, we like your product and we, we like the fact that you are you know, deploying new features on the monthly basis. But to be honest, most of those features, we're not even using because there's, there's no value to us. Obviously for me, that was a punch in the gut and obviously my ego, but right. instead I, I continued to probe that client and ask more questions about how they use the product, how they would think they would get more out of the product. And I started to see things in a different way. At the end of the conversation, the customer said, you know what the sad part is, uh, Felipe? Uh, there's really nobody in your company that we could have this conversation that I just had with you. And that really hit home. So uh, I actually went back to the office that day and sure enough, there, there was no team that was doing success or support. I mean, obviously success 12 years ago was something pretty brand new, but I decided to take up on my own to reach out to every single customer that we, that, that we had. And I started talking to them, 
getting their feedback and started to realign my, my roadmap of the product according to what I was listening to. And I became passionate to hear more and more about the product, but about the customers, how they use the product. But I was getting more out of it when I was starting to see that the customers were getting true value from what I was outputting. And that truly made me very happy at my job. Obviously, I couldn't really do both engineering and customer success at the same time. And that's when I decided to make that transition from engineering to more of a customer success, uh, customer facing role. Over the current and last three companies, I was hired to come in and build those type of teams. I was able to do that in a way that makes the team uh, successful efficiently. But uh, the process and the way that I build teams at a global scale is very repeatable. It's very scalable and it's very efficient. And that is definitely how I became from being um, an engineering team, uh, leading that team to now becoming um, a success person one that truly values um, the way we do things and how we can actually understand our customers, how they can actually be successful in their business. Wow, that's, that's a great story. And, and, and it just goes to show that feedback, no matter, you know, good or bad or ugly, uh, taken the right way can really put you on a different trajectory if you if you use it and, and take it on board in the right way. And mentorship's a really big piece of this, uh, the podcast tracks as well. So that's that that's that's amazing story that to, 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 on that fact. So, you know, customer success sounds pretty simple, but, you know, let, let's dig in a little bit more there. What, what's your definition of it and what, what is the value it, it brings? And uh, I'd really love to know your view on customer success. Yes, no, definitely customer success is that business partner for our customers. In about in 2018, I was uh, invited to be a speaker at ServiceNow Knowledge. And, and one of the key phrases uh, on my speech was value outweighs happiness. And I spoke in, in my uh, presentation about a time where a customer was repeatedly asking us, if you build this, it will make my leaders very happy. It will make the company very happy. And my response was, how about instead of spending money on building new things, how about if we use the product this way? This way, it will make your team more efficient and you will start to see savings within the next three months. There was a pause after I said that. And they came back and they said, you know what, Felipe? That makes a lot of sense. And I think my leaders will be more appreciative of, of saving money. And that is how we need to start bringing value to our customers, right? It's not about making them happy. It's about seeing the value on the product, see how they can actually achieve the goals with, with your product, right? We need to be committed of providing a, a good experience to our customers during their journey with our company. Success, you know, we're, we're, not, a, we're not salespeople. The cross-sell and upsell that, that, that happens within success happens organically. And it's driven out of the value that we bring to those customers on those conversations that we have. And when you've built teams before, as you mentioned, you're not salespeople. A lot of it happens organically. Um, what should be front of mind when looking for talent? You know, I'm just thinking back to some of the high-performing customer success teams you've built before. Well, what should be front of mind? People. I keep saying it over and over in, in, in my processes. People is, is the first thing in my mind. And by people, I mean the customers and the people that you work with. And obviously, with any type of building, the foundation is is key. You need to build a strong foundation, and those are the people that you work with. Uh, so when I'm doing the hiring and building those teams, obviously, I'm looking for people that have customer management skills. But I truly look and hone into those people that truly care about others. I, I listen to how they can actually become business partners to our customers. I want people to understand the problems that our customers are having and and how they or how they would go about solving those problems. I want uh, the people, the success team, to understand the goals that our customers want to achieve. Right? Me as a leader, uh, my number one job is to make sure that I mentor, protect, and empower those uh, in my team. I want to make sure that they are successful from day one and be able to go back to the team after they are, have been taken care of and say, hey, now it's your turn to go ahead and take care of your customers. And if you do all of that above, um, you can certainly be sure that they will go out and, and take care of their customers. Amazing. And, and, and what makes someone great at customer success? So um, I think there are three things that make 
anyone successful in customer success. And for a matter of fact, successful in any job, there are three things that you must have. And that is desire, resources, and skills. And out of those three, there is one that I can help with as a leader, and that is resources, right? I can give you all the tools, everything that you need to uh, uh, you know, learn things. Uh, I can provide with all the resources, but the desire and the skills need to come from the person. If you are able to have all of those three things uh, within you, it is the perfect formula for anyone to become successful in any job. Looking at some of the the customers you've worked with, you know, can you detail out some of the roadmap and maybe even some some client stories for us? I'm sure you've got a few there in your locker. So, like I mentioned before, success needs to be at the heart of any business. We need to understand every single process from the moment uh, a customer is onboarded through the implementation, through UAT, through Go Live, and especially post Go Live. Uh, we need to be involved in every single aspect of it. We're not trying to change processes within sales or with implementation or training and so on. We're not changing processes. We just want to adopt success processes into their processes. Everybody does uh, success. And that is one of the reasons um, back then when I was at the ServiceNow Knowledge in 2018, I said, hey, you need to have customer success at the very beginning. As soon as a customer signs a contract, they should be introduced to their assigned customer success person. We, we started to do that in the Volvo a long back ago, and we had a customer that scheduled a meeting shortly after they were presented with their assigned customer success manager. I met with the leaders, and, and the whole topic of the meeting was, why are we speaking with customer success? We want to get things rolling with the implementation, we are in a hurry to get this up and running. We see no value in having customer success now. So I went on to explain how we do business, how important it is to have success uh, introduced at the beginning and have them there as a, as a leverage at any point in time through their journey in the company, uh, how they can actually um, be able to use customer success sort of like a lifeline at any point in time when they need to success will be able to quarterback any resources to come in and make sure that they are having a good experience through the entire journey with the company. When I finished explaining that to them, there was a silence in the room and uh, oh, wow. we were all looking at each other. And, and the response from the CEO was, this is a game changer, we love it. We would love to continue working with success and, and, and let's, let's move forward. Uh, they, they they saw the valley, understood why success was at the beginning, and, and now I mean they are a customer of using our product for quite a long time, and to this day they continue to say you know we see the reason why success is introduced so early in the process, and it makes a lot of sense. I love that, and that's a true education piece you've done there, which is a a kind of nice segue actually to you know, again as I mentioned before uh, it's stakeholder engagement stakeholder management for want of a better phrase pops up a lot um, with the people we interview so again look your front and center there what are your tips and best practice uh, with, or best, best practice of um, advice and, and tips and tricks that you would uh, you'd give to anyone in a technical or a non-technical role stakeholders are, are different from those that you have daily communications with um, Sometimes uh, very few companies, the same stakeholders will be the ones you communicate on a daily basis. But for the most part, the stakeholders were the ones making the decision to sign the contract and bring your company in, right? And then they, they hand you off to those that will be communicating with you on a daily basis. Stakeholders might not be even using your product on a daily basis, right? But definitely stakeholders are the ones that must be present on your uh, quarterly business reviews. They have to be in attendance because stakeholders are looking to get a status as to the decision they made on bringing you in to use your product, right? They are interested in, 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 in knowing if the end users are util utilizing the product and if they're being efficient on their daily activities. They also uh, want to know if the end users are happy. And I'm using air quotes, happy uh, with the product. And, and this is because they want to know if there are any cost savings uh, from using the product, right? They want to know if, if they're saving money and time with the product. Hey, they want to see how they can actually leverage your product even more to get more value out of it. That is that is the the, the main 
idea behind the interaction with your stakeholders. They want to know on the quarterly basis, a minimum, how their company is being more efficient, how they're saving money, and how they can actually leverage your product even more so going forward. And but let's not forget that at the end of, of the contract, when there's renewal time, this information is going to be very valuable to them because that's what's going to make the decision on their minds as to if if we are being efficient, we're saving money, and we're getting more value out of it, well, the renewal is going to be a no-brainer. They're, they'll sign the contract once again. So it's really about understanding your stakeholders and being able to manage through what they feel is going to be important by the sounds of things. Um, makes complete sense. So look, you know, we're coming to a close now. Um, you know, just generally, you know, customer success or just more, you know, in 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 your previous life in a more technical role, um, what would have been your advice if you could go back, you know, five, ten years and give yourself some snippets of uh, tips and tricks and advice for the future? Moving up in, in my career as a, as a young person, um, it was not easy. It was definitely hard. Um, and as a young manager, um, I, w- I was given direction to provide to the team. When at the time I thought, well, this is this is not right. But being that I was a young manager, I thought, well, this is coming from my leadership. It must be the right thing to do. And I went ahead and, and, and gave direction to the team. And I mean, this is direction for, you know, to 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 grow the company right like i said at the time i didn't think it was by being a young manager i said well this this is coming from a leadership i have to learn now today looking back i would definitely tell myself continue doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do and what i mean by that is that i need to challenge things that i don't think uh yes we are in this business to grow to make money you don't need to plow through people to be successful in, 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 in this world. You can achieve both. You can be successful, you can make money while taking care of the people that work with you. So that is one thing that I would tell myself as a young manager many years ago. I would tell myself, do the right thing because it's, it is the right thing to do. Amazing, amazing. And one of the most probably authentic ones we've had so far. Thanks for sharing that. And it's you know definitely about, it sounds like it being being brave and, and being able to, to 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 take that position is, you know, it's not easily done. So I um, people are going to definitely see value in that. You know, Felipe, look, this has been great. I, I you've given us so much to think about here. Is there anything you'd like to uh, to add before we close? No, I, I definitely want to, to to thank you for for having me. It's really a pleasure to speak about success. Uh, like I mentioned, it is my passion to not only speak with my customers but also to mentor and coach others working in this success uh, field in in, in those who want to come in and do success. Um, it's definitely a pleasure to speak about it. Thank you for having me. No worries. Thank you. I mean, you may even probably get a few people reach out to you directly when to continue the chat. So who knows? Um, no, brilliant. Felipe, thank you very much for taking the time. It's been a pleasure. And um, no, we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. AI Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aulus offer an exec search program. Aulus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. Get the Aulus advantage. Become a member of the Aulus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all us members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.